Hey, Stephen A., start with you. What's Vince Carter's legacy? Uh, one of the greatest talents we've ever seen unfulfilled. When we think about MJ, think about what Kobe Bryant ultimately became. His number one rival should have been Vince Carter. But once Vince Carter departed Toronto, he was never the same guy. His career averages 16 points, like 30% from three-point range, things of that nature. He has a long history. He obviously warrants consideration for the Hall of Fame, but it's primarily because of others who are not in the Hall of Fame who haven't won championships either. But he was so electrifying, such a box office talent. He was unreal to see how he just became just another really good player as opposed to touching on a level of greatness we witnessed from a Kobe, from a MJ. You're going to look at his talent and say something was missing. He's a great guy, by the way, but you're going to say that. That's just the truth. I, I see him very differently uh, than you, Stephen A., apparently. I know what you mean. He looked like, is it going to be Vince or Kobe for a while? It was Kobe. Um, but he's an eight-time All-Star who then had a second act in his career as a valuable team-oriented role player, but a starting caliber player for like a decade. And that transition, although you'd like to see it trend up from, you know, if you're an all-star, you're almost an MVP. Now start winning MVPs and championships. And instead it trended the other way. He's 43 years old. He's, he's a Hall of Famer, not only based on the quality of his prime, again, eight all-star games, but then the second half of his career, where for over a decade, he was a valuable contributor to NBA teams. It's one thing to just hang around as a name, and when you're out on the floor, you're not doing much. He adapted to the modern NBA and was valuable for an extra decade. I think his career, to me, says less about not fulfilling some potential and more about evolving as a player and, and that resulting yeah. in longevity, the likes of which I don't think we've ever seen from a type of player like Vince Carter. So I believe he is a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I, I hope you're right, but I just, to me, even if he were a Hall of Famer, he was supposed to be at least Kobe part two or whatever the case may be. That never happened. And getting back to our original subject about players in their own league, Max Kellerman, Two things I forgot to mention. Infrastructure would cost billions, number one. And number two, some of those owners own the arenas they would need to play in. It's such a, it's such a daunting task. I just wanted to mention that. If they could play a season in a bubble <laughs> in Orlando, maybe during a pandemic, I think they could figure it out, Stephen A. From a GM, part of the Athletics Anonymous poll amongst GMs. We welcome you back into First Take, Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman here. Max, I want to start with you. Who has the most to lose if the NBA's restart goes south? The owners, just as a statement of fact. I mean, listen, we could all say the fans, I get it, but like the owners, as a statement of fact, have the most to lose. First of all, they have, they're the biggest stakeholders, including the players and everybody. Secondly, including the networks and everybody. The owners are the biggest stakeholders here. Secondly, they make their money in the playoffs. Like, the, the players don't get paid proportionally in the playoffs as they do in the regular season, which means the owners get paid disproportionately in the playoffs. And that's really what we're talking about, a scant few, like, I, I, how many regular season games? We're talking about the playoffs here, which is a two-month season usually in the NBA. So, so... Stephen A., if you want to say the fans, I'll leave that to you. I think a case can be made. Um, but the owners, the biggest stakeholders of all, have the most to lose. I disagree with you, Max. I think it's, I think it's the players. Um, and the reason why I think it's the players is because of the force majeure provision, the doomsday provision in the, N in the NBA's uh, collective bargaining agreement. If the, game, if the games don't resume um, and the season is officially canceled, then the owners have the right to rip up the collective bargaining agreement and start anew. And if they start anew, I've personally been told by several executives in the National Basketball Association, including at least two owners, that we most certainly will pursue a hard salary cap. And so when you take that into consideration, and when I say a hard salary cap, a la the NFL, 
Now, the players can sit up there and tell you no way in hell will we ever capitulate to that and what have you. But I would remind you that once upon a time, they were getting about 50% of basketball-related income. It's now down to 50%. They'll go for less than that in the future. And so you're talking about the owners going for the jugular simply because it's not about being enemies with the players or anything like that. It's about the fact that there's an abundance of losses that they've accrued already, and they're projecting to lose even more because of advertisers and sponsors, them having lost money, the kind of dollars they're going to be able to throw into the coffers of the NBA. If we are indeed partners, then we are all suffering, which means we all need to suffer together. This is why you have to have a senior, a season. Chris Paul is a businessman. I think he's doing a great job as president of basketball operations. He knows what the hell he's doing. He certainly puts in the work um, and, and works diligently to understand what's going on. LeBron James, he's renowned as an astute business mind, not just a phenomenal basketball player. Uh, Andre Iguodala, I can't say enough about the things that I've heard about him and the kind of effort that he's put forth in making sure uh, that the players are on the up and up in terms of their knowledge about what's transpiring, what's going on. We saw Jared Dudley uh, issue a tweet weeks ago alluding to these very kind of things that I'm talking about. The owners are going to get some of this back. They are not going to sit up there and accrue all the losses by themselves. The players will suffer significantly. And the, unlike the hey, owners, a., I don't think quick, most players can afford to. Real quick, Stephen A., careful. Things are not normal right now. And NBA players could decide now is the chance if the owners push it too much and they rip up the contract so the players are under no obligations to start their own league. That could happen. And in the NBA, it's not like football where <laughs> yeah, heard that. players can come in um, and it, you'll drop by 15%. Stop, that could stop happen. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Max Kellerman, I've been covering the NBA for 25 years. I've been covering collective bargaining negotiations for just as long as that. I've heard that all the time. And what the difficulty in that is this, Max Kellerman, with the owners, you've got 30 owners that have to come together. With the players, you're talking about 450 plus, plus their respective Not exactly. agents and everything in between. And so because of that, I'm just saying, because of that, what you have is when you talk about, they, the guys can talk all they want to. And I know, and listen, by the way, Colin Kaepernick brought that up to people when it came to starting your own league as it pertained to football to rival that of the National Football League. The advertising More sponsors to ultimately the will NFL. follow. They will follow the dollars. They'll go, where, they'll go where the money is. We get all of that. All I'm saying is... It's, it, I think that there would be an easier path towards having more minorities in ownership positions within the National Basketball Association than the players themselves starting their own league. Stephen the A., it wouldn't be 400. That's in place, the challenges that it would take, the time that it would play. I'm not it wouldn't be 400, but the time that it would take and what it has, that's a daunting task, Max. I, I, I'm, I'm not buying what I'm that. Saying I'm not is saying if you it's had impossible. The top players, I'm saying I don't buy it when they say 50 it. or 100. If you t 50 or 100 of the most important players got on the same page, the rest would follow if they really could get it together. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying times are so unusual right now that if I'm the owners, I watch how far I push the leverage I think I have. And I, and I certainly wouldn't rip up the CBA and release everyone from their obligations because then, in fact, the players do have that yes. leverage. I would well, so, so I hear what you're saying. Everyone has a lot to lose. But I, I still believe the owners the most. Yeah, but I think I think the, the I think the the wrong word that you're using is leverage. I don't think it's about leverage. I think it's about losses. See, what I'm saying is, is it's one thing if everything is going all right, but you just want more money, and as a result, you go back to the negotiating table. No, you would be going back to the negotiating table because of the tremendous amount of losses suffered because of a pandemic. So because of that, it's not about going against the players. It's not about the players going against the owners. It would be about the pandemic has ravaged our sport as it has ravaged the world. These are new circumstances. There's going to be a new normal. We have to adjust and negotiate accordingly. And because of that is why I think it's a little bit different. You got to remember, you got a lot of players because of the pandemic that wouldn't want to take the risk that a lot of these owners are taking, no matter what they say. And that's something to take into consideration. Sure. And the well. player's response, and the player's response could, e could easily be, well, forget about a cap. You guys share the money however you want. Pay us whatever you want. Just open it up to the market. So, you know, if, if, if you're losing money, obviously don't give us that money. But forget about what percentage we okay. all make. 
And that's a legitimate argument. How do the owners really argue against that? They'd have to be willing to not have the NBA. The owners then have Nobody's nothing on that front. You. The Nobody's players still have their talent no. that they could get together and form a league. No one's accusing you of not hey making guys. a legitimate argument. What I'm saying is you need to cover collective bargaining a little bit more because you'll find that even though you're right, that doesn't happen. They can talk all they want. It just doesn't, doesn't happen, happen yet. They've had ample opportunities to.